Imagine a piece so small it fits on the tip of your finger, yet so complex it can cost more than a luxury car. And not only that, it constantly spins on itself in a dance that mesmerizes anyone who looks at it. It's called a tourbillon, and for many, it is the holy grail of mechanical watchmaking. But what exactly is it? What is it for? And why is it so expensive? Today we are going to answer everything, from its origin to its functioning, in a fascinating journey through the history, mechanics, and emotion it represents. Origin of the Tourbillon, an invention against gravity. At the end of the 18th century, watches were true jewels, but not as precise as we believe. Most were pocket watches kept vertically in vests, coats, or hung from chains. And although their mechanisms were already quite sophisticated, there was a silent enemy affecting their precision. Gravity. The heart of the watch, composed of the balance wheel and the escapement, was extremely sensitive to its position. When the watch remained vertical for hours, even days, gravitational attraction caused slight deviations in the oscillation of the balance wheel. And those small deviations over time added up to minutes of error. This is where Abraham Louis Breguet comes into play, considered by many as the father of modern watchmaking. Breguet was not only a technical genius, he was a visionary. While others accepted the limits of physics, he wondered, what if we could trick gravity? His solution was as poetic as it was ingenious, to slowly rotate the entire assembly of the escapement and the balance wheel on its own axis. In this way, the errors caused by gravity did not disappear, but they were distributed more evenly over time. The result, a more stable average rate with fewer deviations. In 1801, Breguet patented this idea under the name Regulateur à Tourbillon. The word tourbillon in French means whirlwind or vortex, and it's no coincidence. The piece spins like a small whirlwind inside the watch in a hypnotic and continuous dance. But beyond the technical aspect, the tourbillon represented something bigger. It was the declaration that watchmaking did not have to surrender to physics. It could challenge it with art and precision. And thus was born one of the most legendary, beautiful, and admired complications in the history of horology, one that not only sought to measure time better, but to control the uncontrollable. How does a tour belong work? Now that we know where it comes from, let's see how this mechanical marvel works. To understand a tourbillon, you first need to know the most sensitive parts of the mechanical watch. The balance wheel, which oscillates rhythmically and marks the heartbeat of the watch. The escapement, which regulates the flow of energy to the gear train. And the anchor, which acts as a switch, releasing and stopping the gears with each oscillation. In a traditional watch, all of this is fixed in one position, but in a tourbillon, these three pieces are mounted inside a moving cage that rotates on its own axis. What does that mean? Imagine placing a metronome inside a rotating box. Even though gravity pulls downward as it spins, the forces are distributed evenly and the rhythm remains more constant. The tourbillon cage usually makes a complete turn every 60 seconds, although there are faster or slower versions. This rotating movement does not interfere with the balance wheel's rhythm, but it does compensate for the errors that gravity could cause if the watch were in a single position for a long time. How is that cage driven? The energy from the mainspring, the barrel, passes through the gear train, and an intelligent system of wheels makes the cage rotate constantly without interrupting the heartbeat of the watch. All of this happens in a tiny space. Some tourbillon cages weigh less than 0.5 grams and are made of more than 40 pieces assembled by hand. And here comes the amazing part. Despite its complexity, the tourbillon does not slow down the watch, does not make it more fragile, and in the hands of great watchmaking houses, it can function for decades with admirable precision. In slow motion, watching a tourbillon spin is hypnotic. It seems to float, levitate, as if defying time and physics at the same time. But beware, not all tourbillons are the same, and some take this concept even further. And we will see that in the next section. Does it really improve accuracy? So far, we have seen that the tourbillon was created to improve the accuracy of pocket watches, but does it really work? And is it still useful today? In the 19th century and early 20th century, the tourbillon did make a difference. In pocket watches, which spent almost all the time in a vertical position, gravity caused significant timekeeping errors. Thanks to the constant rotation of the tourbillon, 
those errors were compensated. That's why many watches with tourbillon began to stand out in chronometric precision contests, like those of the Neuchâtel Observatory, it was cutting-edge technology. But in the 21st century, we live in a world where wristwatches are no longer in a single position. Think about how you use your watch. You turn it, move it, play sports, take it off, sleep with it. The orientation changes constantly. That reduces the impact that gravity has in a single direction, and therefore, the tourbillon loses part of its compensating effect. Moreover, thanks to advances in materials like silicon hairsprings, more stable balance wheels, and calibers with software-assisted engineering, today very precise watches can be made without the need for a tourbillon. So, is it useless? Not at all. What happens is that the tourbillon has changed its function. It is no longer just a technical tool. It is an artistic expression, a mechanical feat, a statement of craftsmanship. It's like comparing an electric car with a classic Formula One. The electric one might be more practical. Sometimes a watch seems made for you, not your brother or your wife, but the Formula One excites just by hearing it roar. The same happens with a tourbillon. Seeing it, watching it spin, understanding its complexity, and knowing that someone assembled it by hand piece by piece is an experience for detail lovers. Fun fact, some manufacturers have even developed double, triaxial, or 30-degree inclined tourbillons, seeking even more precision in modern conditions. And although they don't always win in pure timekeeping, they do win in admiration. Types of tourbillon. The tourbillon was born as a technical solution, but over time it became a canvas for watchmaking creativity. And today, there are variants so spectacular they seem straight out of science fiction. Here are the most fascinating types of tourbillon that every watchmaking enthusiast should know. Classic tourbillon. It is Breguet's original design, a cage that rotates on a single vertical axis, usually one turn every 60 seconds. It is typically anchored between two bridges, above and below, as if it were floating in the center of the dial. Iconic example, Breguet Classique. Tourbillon Extra Plat, 5367. Flying Tourbillon. Invented by Alfred Helwig in 1920, it eliminates the upper bridge. The cage seems to float freely in the air, supported only from the bottom. This not only enhances the aesthetics, but also allows for a cleaner view of the mechanism in motion. Iconic example, Glasshuda Original, Senator Chronometer Tourbillon, Multi-Axis Tourbillon. If one axis is not enough, why not two or three? Here, the tourbillon rotates on multiple axes of rotation, allowing it to compensate for gravitational errors in three dimensions. This requires extreme engineering and is one of the most difficult complications to manufacture. Iconic example, Jaeger Le Coultre Gira Tourbillon, or the Grubel Forcey Quadruple, inclined tourbillon or at 30 degrees. Instead of being mounted horizontally or vertically, the tourbillon rotates at an inclined angle, better mimicking the actual positions of the wrist. It is considered an intermediate solution between the classic and the multi-axis. Iconic example, Frank Muller Giga Tourbillon, 30 degrees. Tourbillon with multiple cages or synchronized. Some watches use two or more tourbillons working in parallel, synchronized by a differential. This further compensates for deviations and creates a completely symmetrical and fascinating aesthetic. Iconic example, Grubel Force Double Tourbillon, 30 degrees. Orbital or carousel tourbillon. In this design, the entire tourbillon orbits around the dial as if the mechanism were rotating around the perimeter of the watch, not just on itself. Iconic example, Ulysses Nardian Freak. These tourbillons not only aim for precision, but also to surprise, excite, and leave you speechless. And yes, they all have something in common. You don't need one to tell the time, but once you see it, you can't stop looking. Why is a tourbillon so expensive? After seeing its complexity, it's logical to wonder, why can a tourbillon cost 50,000 or even more than 1 million euros? The answer lies in three pillars, engineering, art, and exclusivity. Extreme engineering. Each tourbillon is a work of micromechanics. It can have more than 50 tiny pieces assembled by hand with tolerances of thousandths of a millimeter. It is not mass produced. It is created with time, skill, and dedication. Mechanical art. Beyond the function, it is a sculpture in motion. From the mirror polishing to the decorative finishes, every detail is designed to fascinate both watchmakers and collectors. Exclusivity. Only a few brands master the art of the tourbillon. Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, 
Gribel Forsay, Vacheron Constantin, Richard Miel. And that makes it a symbol of prestige and watchmaking heritage. Final fact. Some models, like the Vacheron Constantine 57260 or the Richard Miel of Rafael Nadal, exceed 1 million euros and are made with aerospace materials. A tourbillon is not just a mechanism, it is a human feat condensed on your wrist. Is it worth having a tourbillon? The answer, interestingly, has nothing to do with the time, because if you are looking for pure precision, there are quartz movements that will give you more accuracy for a fraction of the price. If practicality is your thing, a good automatic watch certified by the COSC will be more than enough. But the tourbillon is not for those who just want to know the time. It's for those who feel something when they see that mechanism turn, for those who understand that a watch can be a time machine and also a work of art, a story, a mechanical emotion. A tourbillon is not a necessity. It is a statement of passion, of obsession, of respect for watchmaking tradition. It's like having a Stradivarius violin. You don't need to play it to know you have something extraordinary in your hands. It's like hanging a Dali painting on your wall, not for what it does, but for how it makes you feel. The turn that changed everything. And you, would you buy a tourbillon? Or do you prefer other more functional complications? Leave it in the comments. I would love to read and respond to you. And if you enjoyed this journey through one of the best kept secrets of haute horlogerie, give it a like, subscribe, and activate the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Here at Mundo Reloges, we celebrate the art of telling time, because in the end, time passes the same for everyone, but not everyone measures it with the same beauty.